So, hey guys, you might not have uh, thought of playing something this jank, something this weird, but I guess it works, and if it works, it works. So, Paleozoic actually has some synergy with Tear Laments, and I'll start off with this one, Paleozoic Dynamiscus. Target one face-up card on the field, discard one card. As you can see, the target one face-up card on the field here. That is cost, and then discard here is clearly for effect. So, Paleozoic Dynamiscus actually would trigger Dark World cards, I guess, because they, this discards for effect. Very intriguing. But anyways, since it discards for effect, it triggers tier cards, Dark World cards, technically. But, whatever. So, the other thing that's worth noting is that we have a uh, Rukelos effect, actually. Other Aqua monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. Huh. Would you look at this Aqua monster? And I guess totally is banned, so not worrying about that too much, but... You also have a decent, of course, Zeus line by going into Centauria, down at Zeus, whatever. And then you also have your Paleo XYZs, you have your Paleozoic... Gambro Rister or whatever this is called. Yeah, whatever. So this actually can target a set card in this ball and trap zone and then send it to the graveyard for effect. So this can trigger tier uh tier back row effects, or you can get rid of some floodgates with this maybe. Potentially. And then moving along. Let's see. This effect looks like it's rel relatively useful, but I don't remember what kind of traps you can run with Paleozoic Morella, but I guess like a Lost Wind is not the worst thing in the world, but there's probably better targets for this. They're just not coming to mind for me right now. And of course, these are fine to mill. Once per chain, when a trap card is activated, you can uh, special summon a Paleo, which is going to swarm the field with like a billion aqua monsters you can use for your uh, fusion summons i believe i don't remember how that works but i'm pretty sure you can and then there are also like mini towers as well because every single paleo has this lovely effect of if summoned this way this card is unaffected by monster effects also banish it when it leaves the field so, that is actually giga annoying. Like, straight up. Because of uh, this effect, your opponent's not going to be doing much to you. Notably, your opponent will not be able to uh, Zeus your Paleos or anything. They can't use anything. They kind of have to draw the outs for your Paleo. And uh, if Rukelos is protecting them, they can't be destroyed by battle, so dropping like a Raigeki or like evenly Torrential, whatever, those are like the only ways to get rid of the Paleo cards you control. So it makes you uh, harder to game in general. S some battle tricks can work, like I guess... Uh, Anything that can beat over Rukelos and then attack over your pa your Paleos works. Rukelos being kind of sticky and hard to out because you'll likely have Salik as well. Not much your opponent can do about that. And of course, like having these be level two monsters makes it easier to. Uh, summon sprite elf and sprite spin but the weird thing about this deck is like it, it's kind of a slow start the paleo part the paleo stuff is basically stuff you're setting up it won't really super help you set up because they're all traps of course and these all require level two monsters so like maybe sprite can play this stuff a little bit better maybe we put in a bit of a sprite engine actually Maybe that would change things up a little bit. If we just make it a bit minimal, it should maybe work out. 
I am unsure. But this is just the basic idea. Uh, this is just a paleo tier, I guess. And we also have this one of Eldlick because uh, this is not treated as a trap, but using a Eldlick gives you like some kind of non-targeting removal, I believe. No, wait, it, this is targeted removal. It's just sent to the graveyard. This helps with back row potentially. I mean, you can cut Eldlick, it's fine. But, like, it is still somewhat useful, so. Damn, this is sad. So, let's just do 1, 2, 3. So. Millisecond sharing, shuffle back sharing. Make Kit Kalos probably, like, shuffle. Well, actually, mill, like, 8. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Kinda a bit nasty. Hmm. I guess you could also send Scream to add Salik to either special summon or keep the Eldlick in your hand as well. Heartbeat. You have to send a card on the field and not just pay the cost, so you'd have to send something else. Heartbeat. Oh, I see. We no, better yet. Is it better? Hmm. Maybe not. Time in hand. Whatever. Salik. Pillarzik Damascus. Canadia. Ash Blossom Joystrip. Like, even if we just kind of brick on these a bit, we can still set them as long as our opponent doesn't open back or removal. We're doing, like, pretty well for ourselves, actually. So let's go another. Push Barrel. This hand just works because of the tier cards, yeah. Probably something like Normal Summon, Rhino, and Merrily, I think. And then like... We can add Salik or something and then like mill 5, 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Mill's not the best, I guess. Activate Foolish Burial still ends on some stuff. And I'm starting to doubt the Eldlick Synergy because these are no longer treated as traps, which I didn't realize earlier. And we somehow are seeing the Golden Boy again. Okay, so Shirin Habness probably. Shirin Sen Habness. And then like... Uh, Null 3. 1, 2, 3. That is a Merly. And a Havness. So, I mean, probably just Havness. Shuffle back. Sharon is okay. That will increase the odds of milling Sharon to get more tier stuff rolling, I guess. So then, like, mill 8 with Merly Ikello. So, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we can add, uh, if we want here, I guess, a Rhino, which is fine. And we're still doing okay, and we probably have Salik already. When did this get milled? Bad timing for this, I guess. I mean, not that we milled one. But we still end on, like... Slake you killing us with some of this stuff in the graveyard, that's perfectly fine. I guess we could add more milling, and that'd be fine as well. This doesn't really do anything, so... Next hand. I guess if we get Rhino, it just, like, does it all. And it's like, uh, mill 8 uh, again. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That is 1, 2 names. And that is also a Rhino. Prime gets no. This doesn't actually uh, do anything. I mean, it's not like the best deck, clearly, but it's functional. And sometimes that's all, all it's about, you know? So honestly, this is probably the most base tier list you could make. 
that runs Aquas. Simply because it's not like that oppressive, surprisingly. But I mean, if you add the Ishizu cards, it might become a little oppressive, so... We'll need to think on that. But with the combination of, uh, let's see, where is it? Paleozoic, Leon Koila, Leon Koilia, and the Shizu cards. The grind game is actually completely disgusting on this. Because you can, this is not hard once per turn, so if you Leon Koilia, you can bring back your shufflers. And in that sense, a little disgusting maybe and this is actually somewhat searchable off of uh cambro rister this is searchable off of let's see not i know i know molo Karis, but it's searchable off of uh paleozoic opabinia right uh yes and then you inactivate paleozoic trap cards from your hand as well mm. Wonder if there are any super relevant cards here. But what intrigues me the most about Paleozoic Lancolia is that this is actually a generic target one banish card with turn it to the graveyard. So if I small world did something, I can like put that back into the graveyard, which is very, very intriguing. So you guys might have to look forward to a deck that runs uh Paleozoic line Colia in the future. I guess we'll see. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.